December 26th, 9.44 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we started investigating, well, we finished investigating, I should say, we started investigating a few episodes ago. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead and start our first trial of this case and see what we're going to do. <clears throat> Karma. That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case. He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmph. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. It's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. Now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in forty years. Forty years! Is as ruthless as me times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia, um, Maya? Uh huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. December 26th, 10 o'clock AM, District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Ah, uh, uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now. Yes, sir! Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late, late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12 a.m. at 12.10 a.m. she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went toward the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Justify to the court about your arrest. Now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes? Actually, I'm the one who that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Y yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be a tough one. The arrest of Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. 
That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But, the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. You received a call from a man? Uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I have summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping. A lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. Whoa. How long it was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Do that again and you'll be able to look forward to your next salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for daydreaming. Yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the, record, the court requires your facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Yes, sir! Man, he's got a share of objections. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trust and relationship with the prosecution. Detective... The court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Mm -hmm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. So yeah, if our, if our, like strategy here is to poke a bunch of holes and nitpick on the, the uh, witnesses' testimony. Mr. Von Karma's strategy here is to poke a bunch of holes and nitpick on, our, on all the stuff we're doing. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. It was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet didn't strike bone, so its shape is preserved well. Very well. Or er, not, not uh, sorry, that's Detective Gumshoe's voice. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. The judge isn't really doing much right now, so I kind of forgot how to do his voice for a sec. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. Murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. All right. Sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Ah, it's the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the mo on the pistol found in the boat. There were clear prints prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order, order. 
So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Y yes, the ballistic markings in the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick, what does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tsk. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, judge, you do it. Eh, me. Um, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which as you may recall was covered in the defendant's own fingerprints. Uh, order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now. But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Y yes. Ahem. This court will take a ten minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? December 26th, 11.09 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. So we're already at quite the dis disadvantage here because normally by this point, with one testimony down, we'd have a sort of like understanding and an argument that we could push forward in order to make it seem like there's a chance that the defendant couldn't have done it. But at this point, it's just pretty much clear, like, it looks 100% like Edgeworth did it. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes. It, it was me. What? B but you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I... I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say Maya? Huh? W what? Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry. It's no good. Uh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Ah, uh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any worse than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Uh, oh, sorry. Whoops. 
Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, all your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at the university? That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand. Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve, I, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't anything on that lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Uh, order, I will remove you from the court if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order, order, order. I will have order. Well, Judge? The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Wait, Your Honor, I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words and they all read guilty. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in your testimony? I... I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Y yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Very well. I pray for your sake that this isn't a waste of time. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. Just after midnight, you say. In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Uh, yeah. Well, yes. I know you want to find contradictions, but really. Mm -hmm. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. I was in my car. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait now, I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. 
I heard this bang come up from the lake. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time? Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not to leisurely chat with the witness. I looked out the window, I saw two gents standing in a boat. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture, clear enough for you? Uh oh. Wait a second, I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Then there was another bang. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Juan Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from t talking to the witness. To what end? There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Mm. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, uh, that's what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. Oh, great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. B but, Your Honor... You keep your promise, Mr. Wright. I am afraid that I will have to penalize, penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood. Uh, uh-huh. Nick, a lot of testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what else can I do? I believe we've covered the, in the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Uh, who was that? It was me. Maya. Is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at that lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Wada, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lotta. What's the big idea treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Y yes, y yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I, I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong! What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. 
That changes their testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order, 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 order. You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Kama, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. Maya Faye, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya. Puh. I care not for this melodrama. Very well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. Better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. And we'll begin our cross-examination next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cross-examine Lada again and maybe see if we can take this case in a whole new direction. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!